In this problem, we're told a 65 kilogram person throws a 0.045 kilogram snowball forward with a ground speed of 30 meters per second. A second person with mass of 60 kilograms catches a snowball. Both people are on skates. The first person is initially moving forward with a speed of 2.5 meters per second, and the second person is initially at rest. What are the velocities of the two people after the snowball is exchanged? Disregard friction between the skates uh, and the ice. Right, so we have two people, and I split them up into two things, right? So we have the before and after. So before, right, what's going on? We have this person, right? They're moving at 2.5 meters per second, and then they're going to throw the snowball, right? So they're going to throw the snowball, and then them after, we're trying to find their velocity, right? That's one part. And then the other part is we have this person who's not moving, right? And then after person one throws it, they're going to have the ball in their hand, right? And they're going to move. So let's just go ahead and start with the first part. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and find the velocities of, or the velocity of person one. So how do we do that? So what we do is use uh, the laws of conservation of momentum, which basically tells us the momentum of two objects in the beginning is e equal to the momentum of two objects after. So essentially, that's what you need to know. So you need to know momentum is mv, so p equals mv. This is the formula. So if we want to add up the momentum of two objects, right? And so what are the two objects? It's going to be the person and the snowball, right? Because those are the two objects that are together. And then afterwards, they're not, right? Or well, in this case, they aren't. But in this case, they become one. So how do we do it? So basically, you just say m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. So m1, I'm just going to call 1 is going to be the person, and then 2 is going to be the snowball. So just keep that in mind. So essentially what we're doing is saying the momentum, right, because momentum equals mv. The momentum of the person plus the momentum of the snowball is equal to the momentum of the person at the end plus the momentum of the snowball at the end. So all we have to do is find these variables, and we'll be able to plug in itself. So what are we finding, right? We remember 1 is the person, and we're trying to find their velocity at the end. So this is what the variable we're going to be solving for. So uh, let's just go ahead and start solving, right? So m1, the mass of the person, uh, we know their mass is, or the first person is 65 kilograms. The mass of the second person, right, is 60 kilograms. And then the mass of the snowball, I'll just call it MB, but the mass of the snowball is 0 0.045 kilograms. So this is what we know. So M1, right, is the first person, so 65 kilograms, multiplied by V1, and the velocity they're moving in the beginning is 2.5 meters per second, plus M2, the mass of the snowball, right, because this is the person, this is the snowball. Uh, is 0 0.045 multiplied by v2. So the speed of the snowball after it's thrown, right, is uh, 30 meters per second. And they tell us that. So it's going to be 30 meters per second here is equal to m1, which is the person, mass of them, times v1 final, which is what we're solving for, plus m2 v2. Or sorry, I apologize. This is not 30. And the reason that is is because think about how it starts, right? So this is in the beginning, and then this is at the end. So in the beginning, this is 2.5 meters per second. Right, so in the beginning, uh, the person's moving at 2.5 meters per second. And then in the beginning, the snowball isn't moving. So really, v2 is just 0, which is the speed of the snowball in the beginning. And 0 times anything is 0. So really, you can just disregard this. So this is 0, right? And then equals m1, which is 65, times v1 final, which is what we're solving for, plus m2, which is the mass of the snowball, times v2 final. And so v2 final is the, like, so after the snowball's thrown. Now, this is before it's thrown, after. And so after it's thrown, it's moving 30 meters per second. So this is where you put the 30, not here, right? Because this is before, this is after. And before, the, the thing isn't thrown at all. So that's, sorry, that was a mistake on my part. But now we have it like this. All we have to do is go ahead and solve. So basically, just minus this to the other side, and then divide by 65, and you'll be able to solve. So just do 65 times 2.5 minus 0 0.045 times 30, and then divide by 65. And when you do this, you're going to get uh, v1 final, right, which is just the velocity of the person, is 2.479, right, which is just about 2.48, and then it's meters per second. And so keep in mind, right, it's really close to what he was moving at in the beginning, which makes sense, right, because throwing a snowball isn't going to cause you to totally fly backwards, right, and move far away, or slow down at least, right? So this is going to be your first part. So this is going to be the velocity of person one, right? So I can just call it v1. And then let's go ahead and do the next person. So now we want to find the velocity of person two after, right? So we're going to do the same thing, right? So m1, v1, use the same formula, except for some things are going to be different, right? Because this is a whole new scenario. m1, v1, final, plus m2, v2, final. So let's think about this, right? So the, the person's throwing the ball, right? The person one, and then uh, they're going to be catching it. So m1 is the person two, right? So in this case, it's person two. m2 is still going to be the snowball. Okay, so m1, v1, we know the person is at rest in the beginning. The person, right? So their velocity one is just zero. So that's zero initially right before it hits them right because before is before they're hit and then after is after they're hit right so before it's hit 
M2 is just going to be uh, the mass of the snowball, right? Because it's a snowball. And then V2 is just going to be the speed of the ball, right? That's or the, the snowball, right? Because it hasn't hit them yet. And the, the change, right, before and after is after they're hit. So this is just going ahead and be uh, 30. Now think about this, right? So M1 and V1 are, their, are just their masses, right? But what you should notice is V1 final and V2 final are the same number. And why is that? So it's because they're combining. They're going to be one object. And if they're the same object, essentially, because he's catching it, that means their velocities are going to be the same, right? Because if they're the same object, they have to be moving at the same speed. So really, it's just V final, which is their velocity, right? Because it's the same. M1, M2, right? M1 plus M2. All I'm doing is factoring out because these are the same numbers. And so what we're trying to do is find V final, which is the speed of the person, right? But it's also the snowball. And so what we can do is just divide by M1 plus M2, right? And what's their masses? Uh, M1 is the person's mass, right? Which is 60. And then plus the mass of the snowball, so 0 0.045. Divide by this, right? So you just divide. So 60 plus 0 0.045. And then just plug this in. So 0 0.045 times 30. And then divide by 60 plus 0 0.045. And so if you go ahead and do this, right, you're going to get that it equals it's going to be a really small number, right? So 0 0.022, and then it's 4.8, so I'm just going to round to 5. So 0 0.0225, and then it's going to be meters per second, right? And this logically makes sense, right? If you're hit with a snowball, you're not going to be traveling very fast. It really doesn't make you move at all, right, if you think about it in real life. But yeah, so this is going to be the speed of the person. So this is person 2, right? Person 2, and then this was person 1. But yeah, so 2.48, and then 0 0.0225. These are going to be your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.